It's no longer strange for astronauts to see Starlink trains floating above the clouds. And even though this brilliant innovation from Elon Musk's SpaceX is sure to change the Internet game in years to come, there are some aspects of it that still cause worry. Keep watching this video as I'll be telling you all you need to know about the next generation Starlink satellites and how they remain above the accepted brightness threshold. What is Starlink? For those who aren't keeping up with the times, Starlink is a satellite internet solution that was developed and is currently being operated by SpaceX. Its parent company was founded in 2002, and they specialize in spacecraft design and launch. As for the Starlink satellites, they began launching in 2019. And as of the time of this video, more than 3,000 satellites have been launched into low Earth orbit, or LEO for short. Their mission is to provide high-speed but low-latency broadband Internet services in the most remote and rural areas of the world. While this seems very commendable, many have complained that the cost of the service, which starts at $110 per month, is high, especially when you consider the fact that its target audience resides in the remote and rural areas on Earth. This mainly includes third world countries whose residents earn below average incomes and might not be able to afford the service, even if it's available in their area. The origins of Starlink. In May 2019, Starlink launched as many as 60 satellites. As of today, the company has deployed about 3,000 more satellites, with over 2,000 of them still in orbit and in service. According to reports, SpaceX plans to launch 12,000 Starlinks in the near future, as allowed by the FCC. However, there are provisions for launching as many as 30,000 more in the coming years. Its internet service went live in 2020, and it's proven to be a worthy investment and solution for those in dire need of internet services. Speaking of whom, Starlink is the only thing keeping the internet on in Ukraine, as their war with Russia continues. The world's problem with Starlink Starlinks. As helpful as Starlinks might be in providing high-speed internet solutions, there is still a major concern astronomy-wise. This concern lies in the impact on current and upcoming all-sky surveys, such as the Verisi Rubin Telescope. This survey will scour the sky nightly, down to a faint plus 22-second magnitude. A recent article in Nature notes that the 1.5-meter Zwicky Transient Facility, or ZTF Telescope, at Palomar sees Starlink streaks on 18% of its deep-sky images. In a recent International Astronomical Union statement, there have been calls for operational Starlinks to drop below the plus seventh magnitude. In a show of good faith, Starlink has tried to address the problem, and they have had some success with it. They now paint these small-sized satellites black to reduce the brightness, and now have added visors and stickers to them. They have also begun angling them edge-on to the sun during twilight passes. And even though Visorsat has assisted in lowering the Starlink satellites by about a magnitude, there is still a problem with the new generation Starlink satellites. The new versions do not have the added features on the old ones. And the reason for this is that adding a visor will interfere with the new line-of-sight laser communications between the satellites. An old problem, unsolved. Ironically, the problem of light pollution isn't new to the world, and it has existed long before Starlink launched. The biggest issue here that needs to be addressed is that despite all efforts to remedy the problem, the Starlink trains are still brighter than they should be. It's even even more worrisome when you consider the fact that the Starlink brightness is high, especially in initial orbital development, before they shifted into higher operational altitudes. To add to that, the attrition rate for Starlink is quite high. More so, 218 satellites have re-entered, including most of the Group 4 through 7 batch that fell prey to space weather shortly after launching in February 2022. Meanwhile, SpaceX has executed a series of launches in 2022, launching as many as 21 batches this year alone. Other companies are launching too, as if the Musk Starlink satellites aren't enough to deal with. Other companies have begun launching internet satellites too. OneWeb is among such companies, and they have already deployed as many as 218 satellites for their own satellite train. However, the war in Ukraine has delayed the company's global launch. Amazon has joined in too, as its Kuiper constellation is expected to begin development of their own satellites as early as the first quarter of 2023. Can the satellites be hacked? As with all things digital, there is always a risk of being hacked, which is why, according to a recent report, Black Hat Security has alerted users and SpaceX of this possibility. However, SpaceX has claimed that they have taken all necessary measures to defend themselves, and 
and the users of their service against hacks. The world hopes that this doesn't happen because hacking 3,000 Starlink high-speed internet satellites would be catastrophic for world governments and SpaceX itself. Where can I get Starlink service? Starlink services have grown significantly as a result of the great number of satellites in their possession. And as of today, the company has stated that their services will be available in all seven continents of the world. To buttress this claim, the U.S. National Science Foundation recently revealed that they were going to test Starlink's polar service way out in Antarctica. And according to Starlink's website, the service will be coming to Africa soon, with Nigeria and Mozambique among the first on their list. As recently as September 2022, Starlink services became available to the people of Malta And with this, Starlink is now officially available in 40 countries. As for where you can get the best Starlink coverage, the U.S., Canada, Mexico, New Zealand, Australia, and the entirety of Europe are top on the list. Starlink services are also being spread across mobile outlets like cars, boats, and recreational vehicles. This means you can carry your broadband along with you when you're on the go. If all goes according to plan, then by 2023, Starlink services will be available on all Royal Caribbean internet. International, Celebrity Cruises, and Silver Sea Cruise Ships. But that's not all, as SpaceX is currently negotiating deals with airlines, so flights too can enjoy the service in the air. How fast is Starlink? In the United States, Starlink's media download speed in the second quarter of 2022 was pegged at 62 megabytes per second. This is according to the network intelligence firm Ookla. And even though this is far more than enough for about two people to stream movies, music, and download games with relative ease and speed... It is worth mentioning that a year before that, their download speed in the U.S. was around 90 megabytes per second. This clearly shows that there has been a drop in Starlink speed over the past year. One of the reasons for this drop in Internet speed is their growing customer base. As they continue to spread across South America and Oceania, the reduced speed has also thrown a huge spanner into Elon Musk's prediction that by 2022, Starlink download speeds would be as fast as 300 megabytes per second. But it wasn't just the download speed that was affected as the upload speed also dropped worldwide by the second quarter of 2022. Slower than usual, but faster than others. A drop in Starlink's download and upload speed wasn't what Elon Musk was hoping for in 2022, but it still isn't much of a crisis. This is because even with the decline, their service in the second quarter of 2022 was much faster in the U.S. than most providers of the same service. Let's use Viasat as an example. In 2022, the internet provider just reached over 23 megabytes per second. And as for HughesNet, their internet speed dropped a little below 23 megabytes per second. However, there is one internet service that leads the way as far as download and upload speed is concerned, and that's fixed broadband. As at the time of this video, their service offers users download speeds of up to 150 megabytes per second. And this is more than double of what Starlink is offering. How much does Starlink internet cost? Starlink's internet services start from $110 per month, with a one-time hardware payment of just over $500. Starlink for RV costs $135 a month, with a one-time hardware cost of $599. Customers can pause and unpause service at any time and are billed in one-month increments. Starlink Maritime costs $5,000 per month, with a one-time hardware cost of $10,000 for two high-performance terminals. It delivers up to 350 megabytes per second download speeds while at sea. And just like Starlink for RVs, how does Starlink work? The Starlink kit comes with a satellite dish, Wi-Fi, router, power supply, cables, and base. The base is designed for ground surface installation, or if you please, to support a quick start setup to test your internet connection. So guys, what do you think about the mini Starlink internet satellites being launched by SpaceX into orbit? And what kind of effects do you think it will have on world astronomy? Let us have your thoughts in the comment section. And if you found this video informative, kindly share with your friends. Last but not least, hit the subscribe button and the notification bell to keep getting interesting content like this.